uh, we don't know. You know, we, we have some ideas, uh, but we're going to, we have a lot of guys competing for minutes. We have guys competing for a spot on the team. So for me to sit here and say, what I'm going to do as far as the starting lineup is uh, yep. jumping the gun. So I'm not even going to approach that right now. Dale would like, um, one one is radio would like Dale. And Monty would like an off you have. I got Chief Scott. And you promised me. I know uh, Mike Davis said this. To me, my focus has to shift to the team. You know, he's been a professional as he's been his whole career. Yeah. With all these speculations, right. so. it makes you wonder about things you shouldn't even wonder about. And for me, I'm not even going to approach that. Uh, I thought about answering this question all year long. I was sitting here thinking, telling you guys, that this is the last time I'm going to talk about it. You know, because, to be honest with you, it's getting old. Talking about that all the time. I just, I just want to get to talking about the team and how Chris is going to benefit in our system. More so than talking about whether or not a guy is happy, is happy or not. I mean, the NBA, unfortunately, can make guys unhappy for a long time. Uh, and that it goes for everybody. So, you know, my prayer is that he's happy. And that's what I'm believing. And he's, to answer your question, he's, he looks like he's, he's ready to roll. He's been positive. And I hate even saying that because it makes people think, like, well, was he not positive? And he wasn't. You know, he's always been positive. He's always been upbeat with me. And that's what I look forward to. He said you guys talked extensively this summer. He found out some things about you that he respects as a man and those kinds of things. Did you find out some things about him that you know you didn't know? Or? Yeah, you know, I didn't know that he was that close to his family. I mean, a lot of people are close to their family, but he, you know, he and his family, they're all like, I almost think they're all brothers and sisters. And they're that close. And, you know, he's, everybody gives him a lot of flack the stuff that I just think is kind of cool. He has guys in this group that he, he cares about, he loves. And I knew he was a gym rat, but I didn't know that he would travel around the country just to get good workouts and good runs. And to me, you can't ask for more than a guy. A guy wants to play basketball that badly. I, mean, I didn't know he was like that. Well, you spoke about him benefiting from the, from the system. What benefits is he going to derive from the system? He's going to have to trust me uh, to keep his, his minutes down in practice. Uh, once, you know, we got to put in our work foundation. Uh, but I think in the past, he's worn himself out. You know, in March or April, you know, he's running on fumes. But I think he had to do that to get his organization where it is. But I think he's going to have to trust me to uh, keep him in recovery mode instead of going full bore every day and every practice. Do you know, you understand it's going to be a fight? Yeah, we've already, <laughs> we've already talked about it. We've already gotten a look from him, and he's gotten it from me. But again, you, know, you guys have been in our gym. The one thing we left up in that gym was trust. He's going to have to trust me that I, I know what I'm talking about. I may not know a lot of stuff as a rookie coach, but I do know recovery. What's your plans for Bay? Do you see him playing forward? talked about it. Playing against certain teams, you can play some stretch for a guy like Channing Fry, maybe Travis Outlaw, or something like that. But you know, we don't know. But six nine, he's got you know, he's got the size to do it. But I don't want to put him out there against a Kenyon Martin, a guy that you know, will beat him up and beat him on the boards. But you know, Asia is one of the best shooters of all time. He's so going to have to use it in that position. Like the different points you have, the pieces that you have, and what you're trying to do. What do you feel? I like, I like some of it. You know, the, obviously we still have to improve, but I, I like we're faster, we're more athletic. Um, we still have two guys that draw a double team every night, David and Chris. And yet we put some things around them, some people around them that can slash and like run faster and jump higher. So I like it from that standpoint. You talked about protecting Chris Manish. What about Paige? Is that the same 
for him even more so lately. Well, Paige's situation is different because there's so many guys in this position that can play. So Chris is in a position where he can still play 35 for minutes a night. Ideally, I'd like him to stay close to 35. That's something we're going to have to talk about. And I think coming off an injury, really have to watch. Major situations are different because Trevor, Quincy, Marco, all those guys can play the two, three spot. So from that standpoint, you don't have to really protect Paja as much. But we all know that. Money. It is wide open. And again, I've said it before, I think it's going to be more about fit than it is the guy who has the best camp. Talking to Trevor, he said, from the outside looking at one of the one of the knocks on this team years past has been they can score, but they can't defend. How do you come in and, and change that mindset of being able to defend? We just got to work. I'm not going to change anybody's mindset. Um, they don't have the mind to defend. We got the wrong guys. You can look at the numbers as a player. If you're, if you're scoring 100 and giving up 102, you don't need me to change your mindset. You just need to know and trust the things we're going to teach. The system we're putting in is, is a system that we feel like has been proven in a number of a number of teams and organizations, and we just want our guys to trust it. Yeah, Mecca's is coming off maybe numbers wise the worst season of his career. Um, what are your thoughts on where he's at and what you what you might want to do with him to make him more productive again? It's just hard coming into a system that's already in place, um, trying to feel your way. And step on toes. I, I just feel like he's going to be more comfortable this year. And does that translate to numbers? Individually, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, my prayer is that it translates into more wins because he's more comfortable. Um, the pressure should be on me, not a Mecca, not one individual player. It should be on me. And I think if our guys understand that, they can just play and let all you guys critique me and not them. I think we'll be in a good spot. How much of a heads up were you able to give these guys on, on, on the system? I mean, were you able to give them cut ups and say, okay, this is this is what you do in this system? I mean, this this guy is you, or? I know what I should reveal. It might be. <laughs> yeah, I crossed the line a couple times this summer, but I've talked to guys about our language, you know, our different calls on defense. Um, we did some things legally preseason that kind of got our young guys acclimated at summer league and, you know they those guys talked to the veterans about it and so we were able to teach through our young guys and we had some mini camps and some of our young guys knew what we were talking about before we even really went through it totally so I think from that standpoint we, we certainly made some money there but we haven't done it as a team yet do you have any idea how many you can Ideally, you know, I'd love to keep 15 guys, but you take away your flexibility in case you have to make a move. So, you know, I just don't see us keeping 15, but we like these guys, we like our team. In a perfect world, you want to keep 15 because it gives you bodies in practice. But I just don't see that happening. All right, thanks, guys.